sort of like art imitating life because the kind of act that she's had to go through in this film i feel is the same act that she's had to go through in life Black Panther, man. Um, it's a good film. It's better than the first film. But I'm going to... Because it's going to... I wanted this to be non spoiled but let me just give you a thought I had. Halfway through... And this may confuse you. This thought may confuse you. About halfway through the film, or maybe just before half, I said to myself that Ryan Coogler needs to get out of Marvel and the MCU. Like, that was just in my head. I said... Ryan Coogler needs to get out of Marvel and the MCU. That's the, Marvel and the MCU is holding back what I think is an extremely talented filmmaker. And I think after watching Wakanda Forever, because I'll be, I'll be real with you, no way, Spider-Man No Home was not a good film. It was a nostalgia film. It wasn't very good. Doctor Strange 2 was trash. I didn't even bother watching Thor Love and Thunder from the scenes I saw. That's Probably the one of the worst MCU films to, of all time. Most of the MCU TV shows I didn't like. Okay, Falcon and the Winter Soldier was cool, but Falcon is a trash character. So that was good, but it was okay. The rest of the TV shows were... Loki was trash. Wonder Vision was trash. Most of the stuff that has come out in his face has... You know what? It is what it is. I just haven't liked it. So let me just say it's crap for me. For me, I haven't liked it. And I think that's... This is what I've always said. Endgame was Endgame. You know, MC, you, you caught lightning in a bottle. And you know what? Nothing lasts forever. Not lasts forever. That is one of the great runs in cinema history. From Iron Man 1 to Endgame, that was an amazing run. After Endgame, it's just, it's just, it's just not a hit. But when you look at something like Black Panther, this is easily by far the best thing to come out of this phase. It's not even close. It's not even close. But with that being said, it's not a perfect film. And that's why I just sort of... The thought I just had was... This Ryan Coogler, this is a very good filmmaker. Now, when I say it's a very good filmmaker, it doesn't mean that, oh, this is an amazing film. But as I was watching it, I was like... I understand the kind of hindrances that he must have. Because you have to tick check boxes. Okay, comedy here. Um, what, what was it called? Um... This MC thing here, this has to link in here, this character, because there are characters that you see from a TV show. I don't want to spoil anything, but there's a character that you see from a TV show. So you have to put them there. And with the kind of story that you're telling, this character derail that kind of a story because you're like, oh, this is tier, so this fits into here. And that's why I'm saying that I'm a film merchant. I don't give a crap about the MCU. <laughs> so, so I'm maybe in the minority. I don't care about the MCU. I really don't give a damn. I still haven't watched... Captain Marvel. I'm never watching Ant-Man and the Wasp or whatever because they look like crap films. So I sign up for a good film. I don't give a crap how it ties into the MCU. So with this film, let me okay. Let me tell you good bits and bad bits. Good bits of the. I mean, let me call it the good bits and bad. Bits. Good bits of the film. Um, the acting is there, and this was the same thing with the first film. The acting was amazing. And I think they took things to the next level in the acting. I mean, that is, I never watched Walking Dead. But people kept on talking to about Danai Gurira and so far, like, I think it plays me, me, me Chone. Danai Gurira is an amazing actor. Amazing. Quality. And how she handled comedy and drama, because she does a bit of comedy, but drama as well, so superb. I've known about Angela Bassett since What's Lot Got To Do With It, where she, she played um, Tina Turner next to Lawrence Fishburne. So I've known about her. From way back, since the early 90s. So I know what she can do. She put in work. She put, like, there's a scene she has that everybody will be replaying. There's a scene that she has that is just, literally, you can hear a pin drop. You're like, wow, it's super bad. Let's see she's right. Let's see she's right. Like, I was watching it because she is thrust into... Something that she didn't think that she would be thrust into. Because, the, because, but let's just write again. All across the board, but she, she, writes, she did a damn good job with the role that she was given because she was given a lot. And she had to carry a lot. And my thing about this is that, again, you can't deny it. 
you could feel the weight of Chadwick Boseman in this, you know. And when you watch the interviews and so forth, he wasn't just like, hey, he wasn't just a um, co-actor that, that he worked with. He wasn't just a colleague. This was a friend, someone that's, hey, man, this is our, this is the leader spearheading this very important kind of a film. So it was very close what they had with them. And you know how they say sometimes in acting, and I think, you know, they, I don't know they want to call it method acting, but they say in acting, to get a real emotion, you have to draw from for something real. So if, let's say, you want to you want to be sad and really, really unhappy, some actors that's okay, they draw from some grief that happened to them, and they try and psychologically pinpoint onto that grief that happened to them and bring it into the scene to make it authentic. And you could just feel that when it got to the emotional scenes, you know where they were drawing it from. And you could feel the authenticity of where they were drawing it from. And you could just you could just feel it in there. And I think when you watch the interviews, um, Letitia Wright was saying that, you know, there were times when, nah, I can't do it now. And Ran Cooper would be like, I understand. Take five. Take five. So you can feel the emotionality of it. But what I just think in terms of a story, because my thing is, you look at Spider-Man No, no Way Home, the, the film, it's 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 like it's like bubblegum. You look at Doctor Strange, Doctor Strange too. It's like bubblegum. Yet Ryan Coogler, he's telling a story, and there is a dramatic weight there. And that is why I had, I just I'm not interested in the MCU because there's there, there's no drama like the drama that you got from First Avenger, Civil War, um, Winter Soldier. It's been lost in his face, and Coogler, he, he just bring. It's like you like you feel like I'm watching a film. I'm watching a a, a story. Tenoch Huerta, man, he who plays. Um, Namor, quality. Because I don't know him from Narcos Mexico, one of my favorite series. He was in Narcos Mexico. He was superb. Like, his acting was on point, man. So, the storytelling was, I mean, just the story that they're telling and how they tell it, the twists and turns that happen, the different kind of emotionalities, I just think is on point. The bad things. The action is good. I felt that towards... There is, there is one. I don't want to give it away, but there's one action scene that was the best scene in the whole film. Best it was a, for me. It was, it was one of my favorite scenes, and it was the best action. And it just it was one of the best scenes for me in the whole film. And it was an action scene that happens somewhere around the middle. I don't want to give it away, but I thought that oh, it's quality. The last third and the finale mm, wasn't a fan. Wasn't a fan of it. I thought there were some good bits there, but I felt that. It could have been done more. And I wasn't a fan with the finale. The emotionality of the finale I thought was done well. But the choreography, the action choreography of the finale, I wasn't a fan. I thought that the choreography of the finale could have been done better. Now, it's way better than, than, than part one. Because part one, yeah, the fighting was good. This was way, way better. But I felt more could be done in terms of fight choreography. Because it's a finale and it's important. And I thought he he didn't really nail the choreography there well. Um. The comedy was cool. See, some of the comedy seemed a bit awkward. And that's why it's like, you know, the whole box ticking. Some of it just felt a bit forced. So I was like, Ugh. So some comedy worked. Some of the comedy just, just didn't work. And it just, sometimes it just felt a bit awkward. So some worked, some didn't, didn't land, man. But overall, man, um, it's like, I've got weird emotions. I've got weird emotions, you know. Um, because that, that's why I started by saying that. Ram Kugler should leave the MCU forever. He should leave it forever. Now, I mean, if it does all the muffin money, but if I was advising Ram Kugler, I'd say, bro, just say thank you. I've done my, my, my job here. It's time for me to do different films where I now have full control. I don't have to take any boxes. I don't have to insert this joke. I don't have to insert this character. Just, so, so, let me go back to having full creative control on a product and, and so forth. So, because... What is I'm like, yeah, man, the MCU, I'm done because I just, I don't care about the larger things of the MCU. I just want to watch a good film. So that's why within this, I'm like, there is a, in this, it's, there's a good film here, a really good film. But at the same time, there's like a comic booky thing and things that I don't really like about comic books, you know? So there are those comic book tropes, comic book movie tropes in here that's really annoying me that I'm like, eh. And then there's like quality, dramatic filming things here that I'm like, oh, that's quality. But overall, you see, saying that it's the best in Phase 4 isn't saying anything because Phase 4 has been trash. So the bar is so low 
saying is the best out of, out of phase four is not saying much. So it's just competing with itself. And within itself, it's for me, it's a good film. It is a good film. It's not perfect. It's not amazing. It's not a classic. But it's a but if you want to see really good acting, like top quality acting, and that's why I say Letitia writes. I think the story arc that she has in this, I think it's a really good story arc. It's a really good story arc. Just just watch she has because it's so funny. It's almost it's sort of like life, it's sort of like art imitating life. Because the kind of act that she's had to go through in this film, I feel is the same act that she's had to go through in life. In terms of her role as an up-and-coming actress up against a more seasoned vet in Chadwick Boseman and now having to be thrust in a much greater role based on someone who was close to her and her so, Sort of the arc in the film, I think, is replicating the act that she's had to go through in life as an actress. Now, Jettison to now being like the, the face of Black Panther. So... It's an interesting one. It's an interesting one. Um, but yeah, I'll do a spoiler review soon. Because I want guys to buy a spoiler review soon. But yeah, I've got to think about it more. Let me think about it more. But my bottom line is a good film. But Ryan Coogler, bro, I want to see you flourish in your, in your career. Leave the MCU, bro. Leave the freaking MCU, bro. Go and make a film where you have full creative control and you're not working under a machine. Because you, as a director, you're too talented to be have your arms tied behind a machine, bro. That's what I say. But yeah, quality film. And also, the production design is outstanding. There's one, bro. Those Namor and his crew. Wow, like the design on on them and the crew is freaking amazing. It is superb. Like when you see these guys fight, whoo! Let's see. Like Ruth Cancer, I think, and also the production designer, quality. And also great music as well. I'll talk more about it, but that was also my... Remember, this is the first watch, so those are my thoughts after the first watch, man.